What's up, guys? I'm Chris Spags here, back with another NFL showdown breakdown courtesy of Osmo.com. Today, we've got our Thursday night football finale, the last one of the year, between the Chargers and the Chiefs, a game in which the Chargers are projected for 25.3 points by Las Vegas, while the Chiefs are a three-point favorite at 28.3 points. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this Thursday night football finale, but first, make sure to like this video and leave a comment down below telling me which Chargers running back you think is going to get the most yards today. If you do that, you'll be entered to win in our 24 days of giveaway, our gift from Osmo to you this holiday season. This week, we're giving away either a month membership to any sport if you're choosing at Osmo.com or a free item of merch from our new merch store at shop.osmo.com. You'll be entered to win not only that, but also be entered to win our grand prize on Christmas Eve, a year-long membership, all access to Osmo.com. It's every sport all at your fingertips. These are our gifts to you this holiday season, so like this video, leave a comment telling me which Chargers running back you think puts up the most yards today, and you'll be entered to win in our 24 days of giveaways. On to the game. This is a big AFC West battle, one in which the Chargers are a game behind the Chiefs, so there are both real life and fantasy implications for this matchup. The key item to watch right now is the game time status of Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon's availability in this matchup is going to be key for how people are going to build their lineups and how you can get different with your lineups. No matter which Chargers running back starts, you are going to want to play them. And that is a key that a lot of people are going to be going through. If Melvin Gordon is ruled out and Justin Jackson is ruled in, you're definitely going to want Justin Jackson. So this is the key choice you have to make right now. As I say in all these videos, this is the Sophie's choice, the one which you make that is either going to make your lineup very similar to everybody else's or very different. And I would be more inclined to play any of these Chargers running backs versus the Chiefs who are allowing 5.1 yards per rush towards the bottom of the league. Gordon sitting would probably be the better lineup construction choice because Justin Jackson is very cheap at 6,800 on DraftKings. He could be your captain, he could be a part of your lineups, and he can open up a lot of things in a matchup with a lot of high-priced guys that you want to own. If Melvin Gordon's active, he probably won't be as owned as he should be with his injury status coming down to the last minute and the fact that he's just banged up and people might try to be contrarian and play the fact that Gordon enters the game, then leaves, and Justin Jackson comes in. So if you're playing Gordon, you're probably getting him at a bit of an ownership discount compared to where he would be normally versus a matchup as as good as this one is versus the Chiefs. Either way, I'm playing one of these guys, but I think if you don't want to play one right away, your lineup will get different. You do have a viable pivot on the Chargers though, because I think you can go straight to the Chargers pass attack if you were going to try to fade the run game, even if that isn't my preferred decision. Phillip Rivers had his best game of the year versus the Chiefs in week one. I see nothing that's changed in this matchup that should affect it here. I think Rivers is going to have a nice bounce back game from a down week last time out versus the Bengals. And this matchup with the Chiefs grades out really well for him, no matter how he attacks the Chiefs defense. Keenan Allen is very likely to need a lot of targets just to keep this matchup close with the Chiefs, but I do think if you don't play him, you're going to greatly differentiate your lineups. I'm going to play Allen, but I think it's a perfectly credible choice to go somewhere else to try to get away from what will be likely a lot of ownership on him. Terrell Williams got 84% of the snaps last week, while Mike Williams was second on the team in air yards despite playing just 51% of the snaps. So I do think if you want to pivot off of Keenan Allen but still keep the pass stack as part of your lineup, then you can go to both of these Williams boys and get a pretty decent discount on ownership and on price. Allen is still the play here, but if you want to get contrarian, adding one of these guys to a stack with Rivers or swapping Allen for either or both of these guys could be a good way to differentiate your lineups and play an outcome, which is very possible in this matchup with the Chiefs where a lot of points will be on the table. Virgil Green is on the field enough, and frankly, using him as a pass catcher might be a bit of a surprise to the Chiefs defense given how little he's been involved in the past game. I think he's actually a better play than Antonio Gates, just given the price differential and the fact that people will probably play Gates, whereas nobody will be on Virgil Green. That doesn't make Virgil Green a good play, but it does make him a pretty decent pivot play if you are trying to differentiate a passing stack for the Chargers. Pat Mahomes is pretty close to must play for me in showdown slates. His floor is just too hard to ignore, though I do think, again, he's one of those guys where he's going to be very highly owned. So if you don't play him, your lineup is getting contrarian right from the jump. Feeding the ownership on Mahomes doesn't seem like the best move, but because it is a showdown slate, any move that gets you away from the field can be one that pays off. One pivot I'd be more inclined to make instead of fading Mahomes would be to go to Tyreek Hill over Travis Kelsey. The Chargers are allowing a 22.1% boost to wide receiver ones, according to Football Outsiders DVOA, whereas they're allowing a league low 62.1% decrease to tight end production, according to the same metric. So I think if you will fade Kelsey here, especially after two weeks in which Kelsey has looked like the better play, and go to Tyreek Hill, who's also a little hurt with a heel injury, I think you're going to be getting ahead of the field in a way which is logical and makes sense on paper. 
Fading Mahomes is not one of those things that makes sense to me on paper. Demarcus Robinson could be a sneaky option in the Chiefs passing attack after getting seven targets and 74 air yards last week. Chris Conley was on the field for 99% of the team's snaps, so the opportunity could be bigger for him, but I think people will go to Conley, whereas people won't go to Robinson. So I think that if you wanted to go to Demarcus Robinson, he's cheap and he could have a big day with how many targets and the amount of downfield passing yards that he's getting. Someone has to step up with Sammy Watkins out, and Robinson looks like the better play to me, but I think both he and Conley will be in my player pool, especially if I am going to be under the field on Travis Kelsey, as I currently expect to be. Spencer Ware had a better game versus the Ravens than he had in his chalk debut, which disappointed everybody, but he did get just under 50% of the snaps while yielding some passing attack role and handoffs to Damian Williams. Ware is missed practice this week, and he's currently questionable, but assuming he's ready to go, I do think he's a better play than Williams, and one will come with a bit more ownership, but I'm okay with that. Ware is getting about 20 touches a game, and that's just better than what Williams is, but I think both guys can be in consideration in your lineups, and you should definitely have some exposure to both. Again, if we are going to play the Kelsey narrative that I'm spinning, which a lot of people probably won't for you this week, I think there should be some trickle-down passing attempts as well that go to the running backs that could give a little more value to Ware and Williams. This doesn't feel like a time to load up on defenses with an over-under over 50 points in a situation that's not really comparable to the Bears at home in the cold versus the Rams. If I had to choose a defense in this matchup just based on performance, I would go with the Chargers, but I do think the Chiefs D at home is a little interesting. Phillip Rivers not really turning the ball over much, just a 1.3% interception rate on the year, but you're playing a sort of low probability outcome, which people won't have much exposure to in these lineups, so I get it. It's worth a shot, just not one that I think is worth banking on at any sort of high volumes. Harrison Butker would be the better kicker play to me based on the much more stout Chargers defense in the red zone. However, do you think there is a world where playing both kickers makes sense? Because you're playing sort of an outcome which is in line with what people are doing, which is that you're expecting these teams to put up a bunch of yards, but you're making a little bit different by expecting them to stall out in the red zone, maybe not get as much touchdowns. So in that case, you would lean on yardage heavy guys, like let's say Tyreek Hill, Keenan Allen, Spencer Ware, and the quarterbacks, and you're getting the kickers in there as well to just get those scores without getting touchdowns. So there is some exposure that makes sense to me with the kickers here in a way where it doesn't always seem like a perfect narrative fit in some of these other slates. I know it seems weird to play a Chargers kicker given the struggles they've had with them over the years, but Michael Badgley's looked pretty good. So I think if you want to go with Badgley and Butker, I think that could be an approach which has some value. And there we have it. Those are my thoughts on this Thursday night football finale, our last Thursday night football showdown video of the year. We'll still have Monday night football ones to go through, but on Thursdays, you're going to have to go and find your degenerate fix somewhere else, unfortunately. But one place you can get that fix is through our partnership with Yahoo for their week 15 million dollar baller. For the NFL's week 15, Yahoo is offering a million dollar prize pool with $250,000 in guaranteed overlay in case it doesn't fill. And it's a 10 entry max tournament. So you're not going to be going up against a bunch of lineups from sharper players than you. It's really the best value in daily fantasy sports. And Yahoo is offering it to you as a consolation prize to all the people out there who have lost their season long leagues and now need a fix somewhere else. All you have to do is go to awesomeo.com slash Yahoo 1M. You can see the link on the screen right now, and I'll drop it in the description as well. But go there, use promo code awesomeo. That'll give you $30 free on any deposit of $30 or more so that you're getting that money right back. You can enter this tournament and have a very real realistic shot to win a big prize in a way that a lot of the other sites don't allow you to. So go check that out. Uh, the link's in the description. And of course, you can see it on the screen as well. And make sure to like and comment which Chargers running back you think is going to get the most rushing yards here to enter to win our 24 days of giveaways. Again, we're giving away that one free month to any sport if you're choosing at Osmo.com or a free merch item from our brand new store at shop.osmo.com. The choice is yours this holiday season. It's our way of giving back. And of course, by liking and leaving a comment of which Chargers running back you think is going to have the most rushing yards, you'll be entered to win our grand prize drawing on Christmas Eve, which is an all access pass for one year. So you can win money in NHL with our boy Jake Hari. You can use Josh's NBA projections to get ahead of the field. Baseball stuff when we do that, I'll be on there. Everybody will be involved. So go ahead, click that like, leave a comment telling me which charge is running back and you'll be answered to win both the daily prize and our end prize at Christmas Eve. And of course, because the promotions just don't stop, it's finale. We got to get everything in. Make sure to use the promo code here for one week free of Osmo.com. You get one week of all of Osmo's rankings and his ownership projections, which are very important for getting ahead of the field, including rankings for this very showdown slate and one on Monday. If you're a big showdown guy, load up on those because those really do help out in addition to these videos. So use the promo code we're dropping in right here. That's promo code TH showdown to get one week free of Osmo.com. I'm exhausted, guys, but it's it's all worth it because this is the final one of the year. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for liking these videos and commenting. And I'll see you guys again soon with another showdown breakdown.